a storm has just passed and now the sun's coming out and it's just a spectacular moment. And I'm here to photograph a favorite bird of mine, the blue-winged warbler. Blue-winged warblers are very similar to and closely related to golden-winged warblers. And uh, here in Northwest Wisconsin, we've got them both. And I'm gonna share with you some of the secrets of photographing small birds uh, in their natural habitat using behavior observations. In this case, the blue-winged warbler has been singing from a variety of perches. They're an edge species that relies somewhat on mature forests. And this bird is declaring a territory in this brushy thicket in the middle of kind of an aspen regeneration of a mature deciduous forest. So the perches are low. The bird is often in predictable places and I'm using that predictability and some careful behavior study to work the magic and get some portraits. I just love photographing edges because the edge species are often very colorful and they don't have these big tall trees to get up into. So I am near a mature deciduous forest, but I'm in an area that's a kind of a storm blowdown. In 2003, this was just an open grassy field and I've gotten to watch it go through its succession. It's now perfect habitat for both golden winged and blue winged warblers. What intimidates a lot of people about small bird photography is how fast they move. But if you've got one declaring territory and you can see there's, there's a combination of this feeding behavior and then there's also um, some singing. And so the key is to find those singing perches and get comfortable with where those are gonna be. Set yourself up and be patient. My technique is to watch his singing perches and to start to figure out where he likes to go and then just move in slowly and become part of my environment. Eventually, he'll be singing on perches that, uh, that I can photograph. This isn't a one day process. This might be up to a three or four day process. You have to be sure the bird is on territory. You have to start to understand what it's doing on its territory and start to figure out what's gonna work for you and for the bird. It's uh, day two on my blue-winged warbler photo shoot, and I've, I've come in early in the morning. It's actually a little too dark to shoot right now, but the blue-winged warbler's back on territory, and it's just a beautiful morning bird chorus. The heron rookeries are full of chicks. The ravens seem to have had some young, and uh, the migrants are coming up from Central and South America. We have great crested flycatcher and red-eyed vireo indigo bunting, scarlet tanager, all kinds of great neotropical migrants, not to mention the blue-winged warbler. I'm just starting to catch some of this morning glow here, and so it's gonna start illuminating and making some nice light, both subtle uh, sort of backlight and creative lighting situations, but also it's gonna give me some good bird photography light soon. He's, he's knocking rain down on my head. So you can see his foraging niche is mostly as a foliage gleaner. And what he does is he hangs on the end of the branches there and flips upside down a lot of times looking under leaves. Many of the leaves have actually been sort of curled shut by the webs of caterpillars. Uh, so there's some kind of moth or something. See, there's a curled leaf right there. And he's, he's pulling out some kind of pupating insect.
his singing perches tend to be sometimes nice and open. So let's go have a look at him here. He's, he's right here on this dead sumac, singing right on top. It's, it's a spectacular perch. The light's going to be really good to get him pretty soon, too. Oh, what a great shot that would be. I'm going to try him. A couple of tips for photographing small birds. First and foremost, learn their songs. Find them by your ears. If you can locate the birds singing and understand what they are, you can start to study them and learn their behavior. Number two, learn their behavior. Really focus on the perches that the birds are using to defend their territories and try to figure out what part of their breeding cycle or nesting cycle they're in. A lot of times there's a migration overlapping the initiation of breeding and a lot of the warblers that come here from the tropics are actually settling in and becoming summer residents while other birds are filtering through. So figuring out who the, the residents are can really up your chances at getting some great photographs. I've been here two days in a row with the blue-winged warbler and he's defending the territory from the same trees over and over and over. So in this case with the blue-winged warbler, I knew its song, so I recognized right away that it was a blue-winged warbler. Two, I recognized that there were two males, rival males, that were competing for territory on a border kind of between the pines and the aspens. I moved into the second territory because it was a nice open sunny spot, and I observed where the blue-winged warbler sang I started to find the same 10 or 15 perches over and over. A lot of them were in dead sumac and in prickly ash. I figured with the wet day we had yesterday that the prickly ash would be hanging with cobwebs and dripping with dew, and I was correct there. Got some neat images with spider web and water. And ultimately, a lot of it comes down to being a prediction game. Study the behaviors, know the birds, and the pictures will follow. Good bird photography comes from being a good bird biologist and you can do that with effort, you can do that with study, there's some great resources out there. Check out ebird.org and look at the science that they have there, migration maps and uh, breeding maps. Check out allaboutbirds.org, also by the Cornell Labs of Ornithology. You can learn the birds' songs and learn about their natural history, what their habitats are and where they breed. Respect the birds, respect the habitats, and uh, ultimately, by being a pretty good bird biologist, you could be a very good bird photographer.